Hello, hello friends, hello Flutterful developers and welcome to API Flow YouTube channel. My name is Andre and today we will talk about how we can efficiently build Flutterflow applications using MySQL backend and how we can save and manage our data in MySQL from Flutterflow using API Flow platform. And this video is response to many questions, many requests that I received from uh, developers, developers who already work with Flutterflow and work with API Flow about different cases and scenarios. And today I will try to show you different approaches, how to insert and manage data in MySQL. But also this is like relevant for any SQL database because it's very simple uh, and very similar principles used for all databases and applications. And our today demo will be some uh, products uh, like a dishes delivery uh, app, uh, but you can also use similar approach to uh, different applications. I will try to explain all uh, operations and all potential uh, potential use cases in this video close to real life applications. So we will have some home page where we start with creating a new order. Then we will have a list of products where we will add uh, products to our order card. And then we will create some customer profile. And uh, last one, we will show some send queue page with uh, our order number returned from database. So I will start with building, creating a new project in API flow to connect MySQL database. As you can see, we support few uh, databases and uh, few uh, services here. So we will select MySQL. And first of all, you need to create MySQL connection. You need to provide server domain or IP address. Pay attention that it must be accessible to your internet, public accessible. Next, you need to specify a server port, or if you use default, just leave it as it is. And next is username for your database and password. You can find the tutorials for different tools, how to find these details for your databases, de depending from your setup. So I already connected my uh, MySQL database a server, and I will choose this connection. Next, I will choose database. And next, I need to specify tables that I want to use. So I will use customers, order item, orders, and products tables. And I will leave actions as it is. Uh, we will use insert and update, select insert and update operations. We don't need delete here, but uh, it, just in case, maybe in the future. So I will publish uh, my project. And next, I will load open API definition and we'll go to my uh, Flutterflow project and we'll import this open API definition here. So I imported it. I have my operations here. And next, what I need to do, I go to API flow, copy authorization header and add it here to be able to use my uh, API flow endpoints for my database. So. As you can see, we have here different different uh, API endpoints, operations. And first of all, what we will do, we will create a new order. When we start uh, working with our application, we will create a new order. So uh, what we have here, we have JSON body, and we will uh, need to specify variables for this JSON body. So we will start with email variable, it will be a string. We will uh, specify uh, created. I suppose it's auto-generated field. So I will add total. It by default will be zero, I suppose. So I will use some integer. Uh, and status field, which will be string. So now we have all these variables. I save my variables and next I will add them here. So I will put email variable total 
variable here. I will remove existing value and my draft and uh, my status variable here. By default, it will be draft later, like submit it and uh, process it and etc. It's how it worked for our for our database uh, for processing our orders. So we have variables here and we have our uh, order body. Let's check how it will work. For example, we submit some in like test email and then total like 100 and status draft. And we do this test call and we receive back our order details. So it's created and we receive back some data. To proce uh, process this data, actually I will create a data type because I prefer to work with data types. I will save changes. I copy this JSON and we created data type. I prefer to work with data types because they provide me with some, you know, uh, more strict way to process data. So I will create an order data type from JSON and we'll paste this JSON here and we'll create data type. So I have my order ID, email, created date, total and status. Now I return to my API definition and here in create order, create order, uh, I will specify that I want to parse my response as data type order. This is single order, so I will uh, parse it to order. So let's go to our page and here, when we click this button, we will create a new order using backend API call, API call and create new order. And here we will set variables like email. We will send by default new customer because at this moment we don't have email. So it will be new customer. And then we will send total as zero and we will uh, specify status as draft. So this is just simple, like a uh, simple creation of draft of our order. And here we will specify API order as variable for response. Okay, so now we create our order and later when it's a seed, we want to save uh, for example, our order ID somehow. So how we will do it, we will save our order uh, ID in uh, app state variable. It will be shared inside of our application. So we will have this app state variable and we will be able to use it in different pages. It will be order ID variable and it will be integer because we return integer from our backend. So now when we have this click action and when our uh, API call is completed, we want to update, update our app state variable and set order ID as our uh, action output API order uh, as data type, data structure field, order ID. Great. So now we have our order ID saved in app state. Cool, cool. I suppose it's very cool. So now we will, uh, and after this, after this, we want to proceed to next page. We want to proceed to and navigate to page where we will allow uh, to select products. Okay, allow back navigation. No, we don't want to allow back navigation. And now we will go to a product list. So when we click this, we will be sent to a product list page. And here at product list page, we want to display our products first. And next we want to allow them to be added to cart. So let's do next things. We will uh, go to our API calls and check how our products is presented, what they return. 
its list product and we will check what our products return. So they return us product ID, name, price, and image. And let's copy this data, copy this data, and we will create another data type here from JSON. We will call it product. Create. And paste this JSON. And now our product is created. Only one thing I want to change here is actually image field because by default Flutterflow will represent it as string and I want it to be image pass to be able to bind it to uh, images in my UI. So I will change it to image pass. Cool. Now we go to our API call list products response parses data type product is list. Great. And now we go to our page, go to our page here and we will bind our uh, list view, our list view here to a backend query. We will create backend query, uh, API call, select our group, uh, list products. Uh, okay, uh, we can enable infinite scroll, but I don't have too much uh, product, so I will keep it simple like this. And now we receive our backend query here, and we want to bind uh, children elements and generate our menu elements as um, as uh, from our products item so we select list product response as data type great and we will call them products list save okay and now we have pre-generated pre-generated uh, menu items and we will bind our elements to product fields so we bind image to product list item data structure field as you can see image is available because it's image pass Okay, title we want to bind to product title, product list, uh, data structure field name, and price. Price we will bind to, uh, we will use combined text, we will use dollar sign, for example, and product list item, data structure field, price. Okay, confirm, confirm. So now we have our product list here. When we click this add to cart button, we will create a new order item. Let's check how uh, our model for order item look like. So let's go to uh, API call section and uh, create a new order item and check it body, its body. So we have product here, price, amount, and order ID. Uh, order ID is the key of our uh, order record the product. I will just use the name of a product. You can use product ID, for example, to be able to provide a foreign key for it and have relations between tables. I decided to keep it simple and just to send name of the product and price of product and amount of product. So. Let's create in variables for these uh, for this uh, element very quick. So I have price here, and it will be I suppose it will be something like double, and I will have amount, and amount will be an integer, and I have order ID, and order ID will be another integer. So now I have all these variables, and I have and I go to my request body and we will replace this data with my fields, with my variables, amount and order ID. Save it. And now we can go to our, uh, to our uh, test. And for example, we want to send something like Apple price, this amount two and order ID one, and we'll test how it work. As you can see, it returned us some model of order item. So after we tested it, we can copy this content 
this order item uh, body and go here and create another data type. So let's have it here. Structured way. Okay, we have now order item data type. Cool, great. And now we return to our API call and we'll parse response of our, of our um, request to order item. So we have everything structured and everything well typed in our application and we understand how we manage our data here. So now when we click this add to cart button, we will create a new order item for our root order ID. So let's add an action. We will do uh, here uh, API call. Uh, we will create new order item and we will add uh, additional variable. Uh, we will set product to our product list item, uh, data structure field. As you can see, you, you can send product ID. We will send name, firm. Uh, we will send price. It will be our uh, product price. And we will send uh, amount. Amount always will be one, but if you have ability to provide and to select amount of uh, products, you can use any custom amount. And result will be called API order item. So now uh, after our order item is created, I want to uh, add uh, total to some total field to display it here. As you can see, I have text for total in my application. So what I will do, I will, in this case, I will, uh, I suppose we don't have total anywhere else. So I will use a page state variable and I will name it order total and I will uh, use double for it. It will be not nullable by default. It will be zero. Confirm. And now when I add something to my uh, card after it processed, for example, I want to change total and I will uh, do state manage it, st uh, update page state, order total, set value, and here we will do next thing. So what we will do here, we will use code expression. If you're not familiar with code expression yet in Flutter Flow, please check the documentation. It's a very cool feature that help you to uh, enhance your application. Sometimes, you know, in, even in no code applications, we must use code. So what we do here, we want to add a uh, price multiplied by amount. It's always one for our case, but imagine you have ability to uh, set amount for every position you add to order. So we want to add a new uh, price of new position multiplied by amount to current total. So we will create a first argument here. We will call it total. This is state of current total. We will use Boolean data type, uh, double data type, and we will select, uh, we use page state order total for this argument. Uh, next, we will add a new argument. It will be called price and here we will use uh, double and it will be uh, our, uh, our, our, our action output API order item as data type, data structure field, um, price. Confirm and next we will add another argument, third argument, and we will call it amount and we will use integer here. It will be our response of our action output API order item as data type, data structure field, amount. Great. 
Now we have these three arguments. And now how, uh, let's check return type, it's double, it's correct. And now uh, what we will do, we need to specify expression here. So we use total plus price multiplied by amount. Very simple formula. And next we check errors. Chicken errors, we have no errors, we see like uh, some code generated here. Then let's set default variable value to zero. Confirm. And now we have our page state set after we added this uh, order item. Let's close it and let's bind our page state variable to this label. So we will have here our order total. Let's set it total and default variable value zero. Okay, so let's let's check our application at this stage. I want to show you how it will work. So you will uh, check everything how it work at current stage when we use just very simple API operations to start and creating our order. Let's check how it works. Now application is loaded now and let's check how it works. Create new order. Now it loads our products list as you can see and let's add some products to cart. As you can see total is updated. So we add a salad and carrot and it's updated. Cool, great, it works as expected. So let's proceed and we'll build logic to submit our order and then create a new customer profile. So submit order will be quite, quite uh, easy operation. When we submit in our order, we just finishing uh, like a uh, operation to uh, send our order in details. And this means that we just want to update the status of our order to submit it. So we have here update order operation. And as you remember, we already have some uh, fields here. And in this case, we will just update our status from draft to, uh, to, to, to submit it. So we want, and I suppose we want to, uh, we want to update total of our order. So let's submit to this operation. But, but I will show you some, uh, some, some, some more advanced scenario a little bit later. So we will use total here and we'll send it from our application. And here in our body, we will use total field. So we have our order details. And we, for example, will rename it to submit order. We have this operation. And now we save it and let's go to our response and test. And for example, we will use order uh, D1 and uh, total we will set to some number send it and we'll send it yeah so we have this as you can see set to submit it uh sorry i did some mistake here save it and this is predefined value this value we send with our request and our ID we will send also with our request and as you can see, and can see our uh, response is also an order data type so we select order data type here so let's return to our application and we will submit our order here. We will add API call, API call, and we'll select submit order from our list. Submit order and specify variables. Order ID will be bound to our app state order ID and Total will be bound to our page state order total. Okay, API submitted 
order. I prefer to name API responses differently for every call because later, for example, you need to you need to understand uh, what's going on in your application and when it become bigger, it's sometimes more tricky. So we want to navigate to create customer, uh, create customer page after this. We don't want to provide back navigation with this case, for example, and we will just proceed to a page uh, that will allow us to create custom in our database. And here, as you can see, we have first name, surname, and email. And uh, uh, let's check our model for customer. Model for customer here. Uh, create customer, create new customer, and we have here full name in email. So we need to combine uh, first name and surname and send them to one field. And you can do this from your application, but for example, you prefer to do some uh, advanced scenario at server and want to combine this data. And some of you, some developers asked me if API flow provide me ability to do some additional data manipulation at server side, because I need some more advanced scenario, how I will change my data. And yes, we allow this and you can create a custom flow. In Even in uh, starter plan and during trial, you have access to at least three custom flows. So you can create a custom flow for your application and you can uh, reproduce the scenarios that I will show to you. Custom flow will, will generate a unique address. So you need to copy this unique address and you need to go to API call section and add a new API call and I will name it create customer. Then I will choose host and will paste my API uh, address here. Then I return to API call and copy this header, go to firefall header section and we have this API call here. API calls, as I remember, two or three API calls are available even in a free Flutterfall plan. So it's a good way if you just try something, you can build it with API calls. And now we want to uh, specify our body for this request. So let's use JSON and let's send, for example, first name. First name, it will be some data and uh, for example, surname, it will be some data. And for example, uh, email, it will be also some string data. Okay, now we go to variables and variable first name string surname string and email string now we go to body first name here surname here and email here let's save it and now we can test it for example we will do something like this and g yeah mail okay let's test it and as you can see for now it's sample response because we don't publish our API endpoint yet but we received this data we received this sample data and now we can use it and we need to select operations that we want to do and in this case i want to insert record in my database and i will choose my database now i choose my table this table will be customer table and now i can specify what i want to do for field 
for full name and for field email. So I select that I want to combine my two parameters and for email I will use one single field from my request. Let's publish it. We publish it and you can preview a scale, scale here and as you can see uh, our system combined fields here and it will use variables from input call to insert your fields into, data, into database. So this is a way how you can customize logic of and receive advanced uh, some like build some more advanced scenario for your uh, database backend. Let's return to uh, Flutter flow and test our API call. And as you can see, it created a new customer in database and returned data for us. We can parse this data too. We will not use it in application, but if you we want, we can create some customer customer data type. Let's create it, and as you can see, it easily was created by. Uh, Flutterflow. What we also will do as we want to, as you remember, after all this manipulation, we created the customer. So during this, when we submit order, we will first do API call. And now we will select create customer. And we will select first name, bind to widget state, first name, next surname, bind to widget state surname and next we will bind email variable to widget state email address and we will have api customer here okay we did this and when it succeed we want to update current order we want to update current order API call, we will use our group again, update order item and, uh, sorry, not order item, but order, update order. Uh, okay, we used, we renamed it to submit order and is this is why we don't have update order anymore. So we will go here and we will modify our, we will create another, another call uh, that will allow us to update our order and we will use that action. So let's create it and I will show you how you can also manually create some API calls here. So what we will need, we need our base URL address and we will add it here. We will uh, update order email action. We will have post, we will have here table orders, table orders and here we will specify uh, okay for now we will leave it empty i suppose and when we will go to variables we will create a variable order id it will be integer and here now we can put it into our email uh, into our url and use it in our url so we will have table orders order id we will use part here actually so it will uh, update our order uh, and then we will go to body json and here we want another variable called email we will create string variable and we will submit it as email Email value. So now we have this 
menu and created action update order in menu. So you can add any new action, just follow sample from what already is created here in uh, we call submit order. As you can see, it uses same same logic here. So we created just manually created action in our API group. It's very flexible way. For example, you use order ID one and you specify email address and we'll test this API call. So you can see it updated my email address here in this order and it works fine. And we will say that we want to parse it, parse it to order. It's not necessary for our application, but just to follow follow like same approach. So here when we submit order, we also want to update email address after we created our customer. So we will use API call our group and sorry I, I, I went too far we need to use it here API call our group and update order email here we will have two variables order ideas you remember order ID we save in app state and our email we use our we use our uh, rigid state email address, for example. And when it succeed, API updated order. When it succeed, we want to redirect uh, our uh, user to thank you page, just to say like thank you, your order is submitted. So now we have all these settings, all these settings prepared. So we will be redirected to send you page and only what we will do here, we will bind our order ID from app state here to this field. Okay, we have order ID here. So we built our application from creating our order into a products list to send you page to create customer. But I, as I mentioned, I want to show you also how you can do some advanced stuff. And to, uh, for example, here, what I don't like, what I don't like is that we sent total total uh, using our app logic, but not, not calculated using our order items that you create in our server. So for example, like if something broke and we miscalculated total in our application, we want to be sure that we did it correct at our server side. And for this, for this, I will use another custom custom flow, I will use another custom flow and I will, what I will do, I will uh, do a custom script here. So I want to create a new API call, new API call here. I will name it, uh, for example, place order. And what I will use, I will use uh, for example, path also because it will be some information change. And here we will have variables and it will be order, just order ID, for example, just order ID. It's integer and we will send it into a JSON body just to remember how it works. How it works, we will use order ID. Okay. Let's add this call and let's send some order ID to have this data in our application, uh, in our project, in uh, ah, okay, we forgot to put authorization header here. Let's copy authorization header, put authorization header in our API call. 
and now we send our request and we received sample response. So now we have order ID here in our um, API flow project in our API flow custom flow. And what we want to do, we want to run a SQL query. And during this SQL query, what we will do, we will update our order status and we will uh, update our order status. We will set it to submit it. So we will use update orders set status equals submitted. And what we want to do, we also want to set our uh to set our total to sum of all order items related to this order so we will write a simple uh sql code to do this calculation for us uh how it will look like so we will set total equal to and here we will have our select statement select statement select uh, sum of uh, price multiplied by amount uh, from our table order item where order ideas you remember we have such key equals to received order ID and now we updating order where order ID equals received order ID. And here we go. This is our uh, this is our order statement. And for example, we want to return single value and we will select everything from uh, our order orders uh, table where order ID equals received order ID. As you can see, we received, we uh, will return uh, this record uh, where uh, by order ID. Now we will publish it and let's check how it works. So we have order ID one here and let's do test API call and we received our data with some total as we specified in our order items. I I hope it's accurate because I used uh, I I, I uh, added many many uh, order items there. So yeah, uh, we have this data in our uh, order item now. Order order by ID. So now when we submit order here, we can select this action, place order and add variable order ID equal to app state order ID. And this will call our custom custom query. Yeah, I remind it run SQL query statement and you have this uh, custom script there. So you can write any any custom um, SQL uh, script, any custom SQL query and run it from uh, Flutter Flow application. This, as you can understand, provides you big flexibility when you build a backend based on some SQL database. Okay, great. And now having this, these scenarios, when we use our embedded, uh, like provided by API flow actions, and we change some of them, we created our own action, we can also use uh, API calls with some simple built-in operations like here, when we use insert record and SQL query is generated by API flow itself. And we also can create a custom flow that is running our custom SQL script. And we created it as place order, as place order 
uh, action. So let's let's check our application now, how it will work, and see the result of our work to this uh, some amount of time. You follow my video. Thank you. So let's check what we built through this video. We'll click create new order. And now we will add some items to our order. A few items. Next, we click submit order. And now we create our customer profile. Submit order. And we created a new order in our database. So as you can see, we built full backend using MySQL and we imported into Flutter Flow and built uh, application uh, with different states, with different data management. And we uh, used a few different approaches how to work with our data through API flow. So I hope this video will be useful. Uh, please like it if you uh, like it and uh, ask your questions in comments. I will gladly answer them. Uh, let me know about um, different interesting topics that can be useful for you to record applications, uh, to record uh, demo applications creation and such. Now I'm preparing a big, big series of uh, real life application building related to some uh, sharing and uh, delivery application and etc and it will include uh, much more uh, functions from api flow and we also work on new services so we will drop a new video soon in our uh, youtube channel thank you for your attention today and have a nice day